Hello, my peeps. Tracy here, who just realized I gotta make sure that everything is... Okay, good. Um, I said I would post some pictures. I have been playing with the Round We Go bundle. And I told you, I did some of this stuff the other day, but I told you I'd post pictures of the finished products. And I will eventually post pictures. But I have learned more things while playing and figured out more things while playing and it was just easier to show you. Now, I would have had this done sooner, but I had so many things on the go, and I had to wait for the glue to dry. I actually have one more project that I thought of, but I would suspect it would it would make an awesome, awesome treat holder, or if you wanted to give somebody like a check or money or something for birthday or wedding, um, it would be like the greatest little way to wrap their gift. And I suspect it is a good, oh, I don't know, 10 hours to make. So I'll leave you with that thought. And one of these days, we'll see if I actually get around to making one. Maybe I'll make it in stages. Because you got to let the glue dry in between on that one too. So we'll see. But anyways, I was, I was having fun. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so to, make, to not tease you for too, too long, I will actually show you one of the projects. So when I first saw this bundle... This is the first project I imagined. This is the card I saw. And it's very similar to the one they posted in the catalog. Mine is just much brighter because <laughs> I like the bright colors. So this was mine. Time to celebrate. And you see we got some dimension. <laughs> now, if you live in Canada, I, I would imagine this answer or the thing is the rules are probably the same in the States. Sorry, that's what I'm trying to spit out. I just don't know what the actual amounts are. But we have one of these little sizing guides which you can buy at the post office. And if you can't get it through this slot, I don't want to wreck my card, so I've got to do it this way. If you can't get it through this slot, which is a just, it's, it's between a quarter and an eighth. It's bigger than an eighth, but not quite a quarter. Uh, if you can't get it through this slot, it's considered oversized. And then if you can get it through the oversized, so the difference is like, I think this is a buck something, and this is, right around the $2 mark. So you're gonna double your postage, basically. But look at how cute it is. Right, it's awesome. So I, I have some various things on here. Oops, I gotta put my, I gotta put my little, uh, my mailing thing away. There we go. Okay, so we have some things on here. So I have the original medallion that I did. Uh, this is two-tone, these are the die cuts, and I've just popped them up. Now there is a, there's a little, um, little dot in the middle there that I cut out one of the dies that I cut out but there is also a circle on the back that is one thing I learned that putting a circle on the back of any kind just holds it together better I don't know all of the pieces I have are are still loose so I don't I can't show you that everything is is glued to something right now just trust me it's easier if you have a little backing right um this is just stuck on with glue dots after I stuck this on so this one has a backing which is what is stuck to the card and then I just put some glue dots behind this, which is just a loose one single die cut and a little thing. Um, I put this, this is from, what, what is, I think it's called Stylish Shapes. It's the set of dies with the cool stitch things. Um, so I put this on top and you will notice, if I can get it to do right, oh, almost. There is three dimensionals under this side. I got too much coming in the background. I don't think it's focused. I'm just gonna see. It, I have three dimensionals stacked on top of each other underneath this side of the celebrate and this one there's just a couple glue dots and I put the glue dots on the ridge of the medallion and then just wherever it landed that's where I stuck it and then this one you'll notice is just stamped so when I showed you this when I was making the first time I showed you that I like stamped it on a white piece of cardstock and then I just lifted it up turned it a little bit and stamped again so I got like the two tone well these this is what it looks like two totally different colors Plus, I use two different stamps. This is the same stamp. This is the big and the little stamp. But just to give you ideas on how it looks, right? I showed you stamping on green cardstock and that the other day. Anyways, this was my card, and I absolutely love how it turned out. And there's all these, like, little bits and pieces of stamps in the set, too. So I've got, like, a fun little inside as well. And slightly different, but, you know, similar on the outside. So that was my one project. And, yes, love, love, love how it turned out. That's what I envisioned. So this, this is why everything takes so long when I craft, um, or sometimes it does. Sometimes I just get going. So I did this, and because this is, one, like I told you, one of my favorite color combinations. Shaded spruce, lemon lime twist, and white, right? 
love this color combination. But then when I looked at this, I thought, oh, you could do this in wedding colors. You could do this in grad colors or just school colors if you're, or like a sports team or something, if you're, whatever you're doing. So then I did this. So this is my son's school colors. Just now I gotta put this down here without trying to wreck everything. Okay, so this is my son's current school, his high school. Uh, this is their colors. He's had different, every school he's been to, I think has had different colors now that I think of it. So here's just a couple combinations. And this is just to show you as well, because I was mixing and matching the size. So these are the two bigger die cuts. If you put them on the smaller starburst, they're pretty, they fill it. If you, this is a mix and match, but it wouldn't matter if you put the other way. I'll show you the other way in a minute. Um, but anyways, yeah, you could make different things with like the different school colors. And it, it does, it makes a, it makes a difference in how they appear. It's not a huge difference. This is why things are not glued down, so I can show you things and change things. It makes a difference, though. So you got to do a little trial and error, whether you put the black one on top or the red one on top. And most, I mean, mostly it makes a difference in the center. But for some reason, whatever's in the center makes me, like, I see this one as being more black. Because, and I think it's because the center is black and this one is being more red, right? So trial and error, just, and, and there's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you want, right? So as I'm doing this, I put the two red ones together and instantly I saw a poppy. <laughs> so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be on there, but that's what I saw. I put the two red ones together and instantly I had to put the black piece in the middle because I saw a poppy. And then I thought, oh, and you could mount it on this. You could make like a cool little pin. Um, and just so you know, because I tried, this is the smallest of the circle die cut that's in there, and this is slightly bigger. And I couldn't decide which one made the better poppy. Uh, my son voted and told me it was this one. So, but this is just the two red ones on top of the smallest of the, like this is the starburst. So if I put these two red ones on the bigger circle that's in there, the scalloped die cut, um, you got a lot more room. Anyways, just things to show you. So you see things. Oh, and here we go. Look at this, because I have them all stacked to put them out of the way. You can just layer the whole bit. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So that was colors. That was that. Okay. So that was some things. Um, I did show you. Oh, here we gonna move our projects off to the side a little bit. I did show you that I was trying to do it with um, DSP. So this is the one I did with the DSP. And for the most part, I mean, this card looks very different than this card. <laughs> I just wanted the rosette, right? And it is made out of DSP. I think I interchangeably call that a rosette and a medallion. <laughs> Whichever one is, well, you'll see in the next one, I'll call it a medallion, but there's a reason for that. So when I went to put this together, excuse me while I cough. <coughs> I think that's it. When I went to put this together, I realized that I had folded I should have had a piece cut and I don't. When I was doing the mountain fold, mountain fold, I folded one of the DSP ones backwards. Not sure why. Uh, they don't really join well if you fold one of them backwards. You got to fold them both the same way. Start by folding the tab down. So I went to, so I'm like, I got no other choice. So I refolded the DSP. Now, even when you just cut it the first time, the DSP will crack in a few places. Um, I think I need to try it with like a slightly thinner shim, like take out the smallest the little layer that's in there and put just like a, a slightly thinner shim so it doesn't cut the DSP as much. I'll do a separate video on that one of these days when I get around to doing that. Um, when I went to refold it a second time, it cracked a whole bunch more. But when you look at this, when it's all put together, because you push everything, you kind of push it all together. Um, I'll try to get as close as I can. Like here, you could notice it's a little bit white on the edges. You're starting to see some of the crack through the paper. But for the most part, you don't notice. Some of them are like cracked right through. Like there's a hole there. But by the time you put it together, you don't really notice. So you just got to be more careful with DSP. And yeah, definitely only fold your DSP once. Try not to manhandle it too much because the, the die cuts quite well. Okay, so that was card number two. Um, let's see. Okay, let's, okay, so there's two things. I'll save the last two projects and I'll show you some of this other stuff um, so I can move some things out of the way. Okay, I showed you all of those. Okay, so these were just, again, different combinations. So this is like still, I had leftover pieces. I showed you that with kind of with the red, right? Different looks for things. Um, seriously. Um, one of the things I noticed is I was just like dropping pieces around. 
and playing with things is I got I didn't glue this down. If you do this, I knocked it when I moved it. If you cut one of the circles, so I'll get my hand out of the way. The the little diamonds on it, they line up perfectly between the petals. <laughs> like this is what it is. But when I, I just like dropped it down and then I noticed and so I went, oh just a minute. So it's just like you just gotta give it just like the tiniest little adjustment. And so you can put just like the, like there's another layer with a cool background and the petals, that's what's a little crooked, but the petals fit just behind them. It's very cool. Um, here's some samples of laying like two different colors on top of each other. This one is layered with just a dimensional in between, but it just gives you kind of a cool background. Like you don't have to use a rosette or anything else. You could do this. Let's see what piece I have. That one's not big enough. <laughs> just I got I set stuff. I don't I don't and you may have noticed this. Maybe it's maybe it's not as obvious to you, but to me, but um, I don't plan my lives too much. I, I like I know what I want to tell you, and then I just start going, and then we just see what happens. So sometimes I just, but I always have stuff on my desk. So I mean, you could just use this as just a cool background. Put a banner on it, type something there, right? Like it's just a cool way to do it. <clears throat> you can use these. Here, I'll move these up. We'll just borrow these temporarily, and just use them and make sentiments. Not even use anything else. Just put them in white and make sentiments, right? Um. I'm going to show you though. So this is what I was trying to do. I, these are the dies that come with the set and these are the ones they don't cut through, right? They just make a pattern. So I thought, okay, so let me see what I can find out. Let me see if I can turn them into something uh, or like into to rings, like what, what I can use. So I checked all the dies I have, circle dies. Now I don't have all of them and I'm, I'm trying to get better at, at rehoming my retired stuff and just using current. So some of the older ones I don't actually have anymore. Um, I know if you had the Spaceman set, it had tons of, ton of circle dies in it. Um, I never did get that one, so I can't, I can't even remember what size they were. But I tried all of my circle dies, and none of them worked. And then I tried punches, because these are the two pieces, which I really need to clean out because there's still bits and pieces in them. Um, so these are the two things I was trying to accommodate. So basically what I found out is if you use, if you want to make the smallest one, that's this little ring here. You want to use the smallest one. The closest you can come with, because if not, you you hit. Um, uh, your your punch will start cutting into the holes, like and there's just I mean there is no amount of. Oh, that's not going to really work. I just put a piece of white paper there. Just one second. Um, there's no steady hand. No, no matter what, um, you just can't make it work. It's coming with. It's making holes. It, it'll cut into your holes. So what I found with this one, oops, <laughs> is if you use the three quarter punch in the middle and inch and a quarter, wait a minute, is that inch and a quarter, inch and a half? I think it's inch and a quarter. Yeah, inch and a quarter on the outside. Now, it's, it's not the end of the world. If you are trying to make it even, neither one of these scenarios will make it even. Here, so I gotta put this down, poking me in the hand. Um, you see the difference between like the line of circles and the inside edge here and the line of circles on the outside. I, I couldn't find a combination that made those even. Okay. But three quarters on the middle inch and a quarter on the outside will give you a circle that looks like this. You'll notice though, slightly crooked. When I did this one, same thing. This is one inch in the middle inch and a half on the outside. Now <laughs> also crooked. Um, and again, not even like that inch and a half on the outside comes fairly close to those, those little, um, cutouts. Whereas the inside there's, there's a fair bit of a gap. And if I use this one, which I, I will show you the better way to do it. And it's actually even, you'll notice it's still, it's still a fair, a fair difference between how, how wide this little edge is versus this edge. Right. But you see how this is nice and centered and this one is cockeyed and this one is cockeyed. Well, here's the difference. The first one I took, a, I had, I had a, um, die cut this into just a chunk of paper and I just took the chunk of paper and I punched out the middle and then I punched out the edge. But when you do that, you can't see what you're doing, right? So you think you can, but when you, as soon as you go to line it up, it really doesn't work. So here's the trick. Um, I guess I'm doing the biggest one. Just a minute. What do I have here? Just like I had to have totally the wrong punch.
There we go. Um, so I'm going to show you on this bigger one here. So what you want to do, and I think I grabbed a piece of paper. So that, pretend this is your piece of paper, right? I will tell you this works for any time you have to double punch or double die cut. This is what I would recommend. I did the same thing when I was using squares to make a buckle for Santa's belt. And I just wanted the, like the inside line, right? So unless you have a set of dies that you can, that are spaced perfectly, so you can put both dies on at the same time and run it through, that, I mean, that's by far the easiest way. But if you're, if you're down to using punches and you got to punch twice, this is the order you want to do it in. <laughs> so we're going to go here and I'm going to go very, I didn't actually check. I hope this piece of paper is big enough. So I'm going to punch my, I got a broken punch. I'm going to punch my smallest circle first, right? Then I'm going to put this thing in and I'm going to die cut it. Uh, well, you know what? I have so much stuff on my desk. Let's just see how this works. Let's maybe move that. Okay. This is the good thing about the mini is it will fit in small places because Lord knows I got stuff on my desk. Okay, so this way. I didn't know where you can see. There we go. You can't quite see because the handle's kind of in the way here. I'll pull it out a little bit. So now I've lined it up. I've made this nice and even. Now I, you'll notice, have little bits of, um, what's that paper called? Masking paper that I use to hold things down. So I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to, here, i got to move this back before I knock everything on the desk. Because yes, the, like I said, the beauty of the mini is you can make it work most places. It wasn't really designed to go this way. Okay. So I cut with the little punch first. Then, and it, and you don't always have like, you're not always trying to put a third layer in, but, but even if you just pretended that I was just punching twice, same idea. But for the specific case of these ones, get all the little pieces out of the way, you want to add this little, ooh, I cut that really close. Let's see if I grab the right size piece of paper to begin with. Okay. Okay, so then I did this part. So now I'm taking my inch and a half punch. And now I'm circling. And the thing is, at every one of these steps, I can now see what I'm doing. Right? So I'm going to go like this. And this one is very close. Like I said, you got to be careful and make sure you got a nice even thing. So there we go. So now I have my even band. And I'm going to show you. Where would this be? I'm going to show you how hard it is if you do it the other way just for just for um no that's oh well okay um just a sec <laughs> i need to uh i started with a bigger piece of paper i need to i need to have this embossed this piece of paper is too big to go through i'm just going to do this just just for the example that i want to show you Just so you know, this is very rough and I'm, I'm trying to go fast. But if you ever wanted to, like if you ever wanted to cut this out and have the little starburst on the outside, you could carefully hold this down, trace it with the pencil, fussy cut it, and then you would actually have that because the outside of these dies make perfect templates. Okay, so here's my thing. This is where, in the middle of all this, is the holes that I've cut. Right? So let's pretend I've, I've embossed this. Okay, so now, that's the wrong size punch, just a minute. Now I'm going to go like this. So you think, oh, that's okay, I'll just punch a hole in the middle. Okay, where's the middle? Because <laughs> seriously, you just completely blocked everything with your punch. So unless you can figure out a way to mark something. So like I did this and I'm like, oh, I can see the line there. Oh, I see a bit there. So, oh, now, because you're trying to get left, right, up, down all at once. So I can do what I think... And of course, because I'm doing this now to prove a point, it'll absolutely work. So I think, okay, so that's, so I go left, right. Yeah, I'm just going to go there for, oh, that's actually not too bad. <laughs> um, but it's not even, but it's because I'm guessing, right? Because as soon as I put the punch on, I can't see. And then I use my bigger one and it's only slightly better because, 
N not that I can't see, I can totally see. But now that I've done it this way, I'm stuck with, I either try to match this one being done or I just go and make one, like one even and one uneven. Cause, cause if you had made it like this one, this one here is quite crooked, but I could maybe do like this or something, or, or I could make it look really good where it is and I could put something on the bottom and hide it. Right? So this one I'm now left with the, but anyways, you see my point, the order you do them in makes a difference to make it easier. And it does make like cool little decorations and stuff. Um, though I did notice cause after I did this whole thing, I'm like, Oh, you know what? I remember seeing a sample in the catalog. Um, there was a couple of them. Why don't I look and see what they did? <laughs> so I did go look back and they, and on the card, they made one of the samples. They have a bunch of these rings just like embossed like into the background, right? So you could do that too. Um, in that case, it's much easier. But anyways, so that was just a little helpful tip, tip there. It doesn't matter which order you do them in. And that's definitely easier to do it the other way. Um, okay. So you can also. This is me um, cutting the circle and then I just punched it out with that same inch and a half punch. But look at my pretty little um, label thing now, sentiment label, which I don't know if this fits. One of the, oh, it does too. One of the stamps that's in the, in here that says this is your, and then you can write day, year, month, I think, would totally fit in here, but just even from another set. But look at that, that just makes a cool label. Um, if you just want to fill stuff up, that's what it looks like. If you die cut both of them, you do have to do this in two separate passes though. The edge of the dies overlap. So if you try to put the outside die on and then the inside die on, um, but they don't overlap. Sorry. They, um, Oh no, nope. This is the wrong one. Sorry. It was something else I was trying. I was trying to do the two circles. These do work. These ones are far enough apart. So you could lay them like this and then just put like a little bit of masking tape on. And then that's what you get is this one. Yeah, no, it was the other one. I tried everything. I'm like, hey, what if I did this? What if I do this? That's how I roll. Okay, have I showed you all these things? Yes, I have. Okay. Like I said, <laughs> I was having a lot of fun. <laughs> Move those out of the way. Okay. Now, the biggest thing I'm going to show you, though, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> is I showed you how I had started doing these, right? So my original one, this one here is two, two pieces of this together, right? You need two to make the circle. So I used two, I made it just a single color circle. When you do the single color, it hides a lot. <laughs> when you do different colors um, and you go to put them down, the trick is, and this, these aren't fastened for a reason. So, so you notice this more of a, like a squished egg in the middle than a circle. Cause when you stick them down, like I put the, my little back piece had the glue on it and I stick this down and then I'm trying to even this out. I'm well, you, if you could get this to be the perfect circle, because you'll notice if I do it like this, right, this is my bottom piece. I should have the, the connection of these two should be lining right here, straight up the middle, but I'm off by a little bit because I, this is squished way too close here. Right. And then it's spread out here. What I found though, is if you use the liquid glue and you stick stuff down, if you try to peel it off and redo it, the liquid glue softens your paper. So for sure I'm ripping this piece, but I'm also making these pieces softer, which I find makes them not stick as much. Like they might stick at first, but because they're you've like broken down all the fibers, um, they tend to pull apart. So I kind of find it's one of those, you just gotta go with it, whatever you get. So I'm like manhandling and pushing as much as I can this glue is still a little bit tacky to try to make it work. The trick is when you were doing this the first time you're, you're watching your, sh you got about 10 things going on. You could use like two extra hands doing this. And if you have extra hands, take them up on it. Um, do one color <laughs> if it's at all possible. Um, it's the same as this one, like this pattern didn't really matter so much when I put the two pieces together. Like you notice how dark it is here and then it's light here. It's because it's two different pieces, but it's just a random kind of meant to look like a winter sky. So it's not a big deal. If you had a very specific pattern and you were trying to put with DSP together, it's very obvious, right? So if the, 
a single color will hide your faults if you're doing multiple colors because you can this is like three gives you you have to wait a minute for me to show you the difference in size um because i got to show you my other project three gives you a bigger medallion and this one could have been much bigger this is four but and it could have been much bigger than it was i just purposely squished it together because i wanted to put this in the middle and i didn't want to have the massive like white piece with nothing on it um because i could have stretched this one out a bit more i could have stretched this one out i could have pushed this one in smaller and made these like tighter but it's just a matter of doing that and you have to do it when it's wet and then whether you so whether you put it your circle down and put this on the back and then put pieces on it um, you have to hold it for a minute right you cannot rush this if you rush this you will end up with glue everywhere so you need to hold this for a bit and like keep it and when i was doing it i was holding it like this right so nothing would spring out i held it for a good minute or two to give it like a really good chance to get its initial grip and then i slid these on like this and then i let it sit for i don't know 10 or 15 minutes because there's there's pressure like this thing is folded tight and it wants to spring open. Remember when I was putting it together and they kept bouncing up? That's what they want to do. <laughs> Which now that I say that, I wonder if the, you could probably put it in like a flat box. Oh, I'm going to have to do that now too. If you had like a little box, remember when we had the pizza boxes? You could put this in the pizza box, put it down flat, close the lid, and when the person opened it, it would spring out. <laughs> I just thought of that. Um, see, see? <laughs> the more you play, the more you think. Okay, so this is what I did. Now, whether you do it this way or the other way, it doesn't really matter. What I, And I'll show you on this one, though. So I had done this the first time, and then I thought, oh, my things, I was trying to line these up. Like, you see, this one is still off. I did pretty good on this one. This one is still off by a little bit. So I was doing this, and I'm, like, pushing, and I'm trying to adjust, and I'm trying to make it while it has the blocks on it. And as a result, this is, like, way off kilter in the back. Now, thankfully, I'm showing the front part of it, and it doesn't matter as much. But if you were doing like a banner that was hanging across something like this, where people could see both sides, then you, you have to be cognizant of where this goes. If I had used a smaller circle and I pushed it this much off, chances are I would have lost the grip on this. And if you do that, leave the small, I just put a second one over top. I would never try to pull the first one off for the same reason. Like I said, you're just going to make it where the top's now not going to stick as well. So in the end, it worked pretty good. This is not... It's black on black, so it's kind of hard to see. This is not too bad. It's close to being a circle. But as you can see, the these line up not too bad. These ones are off by like a whole thing. But when I put this in the middle, and so when I go to put this in the middle, I, I can put like glue just like basically where it's going to hit here. Like I'll just put it on the outside of this. But I also could just stack like, it probably is three on this one as well like two piles of three dimensionals in the middle and then stick this on like this and it would hold. And so the, the putting the circle, it does actually cover a little bit of my, like of my not being able to get it straight. Um, the other thing I will show you that I have, this is the reason I didn't glue these down so I could show you. Okay. So this is the front side of both of them. And this is where we have the tab going. Now, if you were doing one color and you, and you hadn't decided if you wanted the, which like the pointy end or the round edge, these are both round. Um, I don't think it matters which way you glue it, but if you are using multiple colors, decide first which edge is going out and then make sure it's at the top as you're gluing stuff together. Because you'll notice that if you decide, oh, I want it, oh no, I don't want that. And you flip it and it's not gonna give you the same idea. But if you flip it to get the pointy edge out, sometimes you end up with kind of what is the backside of your rosette like the way it pokes out and you'll know because these tabs aren't full pieces like the other ones like the ones on the front right so the back side is messy so make sure when you're doing it like if you're deciding in between them that you if you if you decide ahead of time it's great because you can glue it and then push it down and boom because you don't want to be bending this paper anymore than you have to or putting any more torque on these joints than you have to but just make sure because if you do this if you decide no i want it this way and you flip it over you're going to have where anywhere there's a joint, it's not going to connect as well. So make sure you've decided first and figured it out. And when you're putting your piece on, make sure like this is just the back. If this was meant to be the front, that's fine. But if it's meant to be just a scrap on the back, cause like the one, Oh, it's the one that's glued down as well. Um, 
The one I did, I just like punched a circle out of just like white cardstock and used it as the back piece. I didn't use the fancy die cut. This one I was using because I had all these die cuts all over my desk. But so yeah, um, just make sure that you are putting the back piece on the back and the front piece on the front because they do look different. And it's most noticeable, obviously, on the different colors because you're losing a chunk of each one. Right. But I think these are cool. Uh, okay, so I'll give you a hint of what made me think of this. As I was doing these, I thought, oh, if you made a couple each. Yeah. <laughs> Layered cake. That was the big project. But seriously, the version I had in my head, minimum 10 hours. Okay, so there's some more of those. Those are some more of my little projects. Now, I'm going to show you <laughs> my last two projects. I'm trying to give you all the stuff in one view. There we go. We got this one down here. <laughs> okay. So then one of the other things I said you could make medallions, right? So this is, I was trying to do this like a graduation, and this is kind of like sort of the University of Alberta, which is more green and like a yellow color, gold. But I actually use gold paper, hence the 24. Uh, but I mean, really, you could, somebody makes the hockey team, I don't even know exactly how it works, but I know the draft's going right now because you see it all the time. People keep commenting on it. Um, and I noticed they all had the number 24. And at first I'm like, what? And then I realized it's because it's the 24 draft, like 2024. But if this was your hockey number and you want to, or a baseball number or a whatever number, and you want a tournament, you could put whatever number you wanted on here. I did try, just so in case you were wondering. This is the uh, Alphabet a la mode dies. I did try because I still have these big letters because I love them. Um, they, I don't know. It was too big. It, it hung off the, it hung off this medallion and I thought it was too big. If I put it on this one, it would have been okay. But on this little one inside, it didn't work for me. But just so you know, for size wise, that's the, these are retired now, but I'll never part with my biggest letters and biggest numbers. And then, yeah, I did, this is just cardstock and I put a little thing on the back so I could write on it. Now you could make these and hang them. Like I put this on cause I envisioned I mean, if you were having a wedding anniversary and you made these out of, like, if it was a ruby anniversary, you could make these out of, like, cherry cobbler and put a shiny little number on the front, a 40 on the front, and, you know, congratulations, or put, like, you could print them on the computer with names. These could go over wine bottles. They could go over wine glasses. These could be, like, I don't know, somehow decorating the table as the souvenirs and or just decorations. You could make a banner. So you don't necessarily need to put, like, a loop like this on it. But if you were making a banner and you made, like, the front piece then you could always put the ribbon or the string or whatever you want and glue it between this banner and this white layer on the back, which I would probably make green if I wasn't planning to write on it. And you could make like a banner that goes with them. So yeah, you can have lots of funds with these. And there's no, there's no, you could make them with this as well. If you wanted to get really fancy. Here, we'll put it like this. These are horrible colors together, but let's pretend. Like you could make big rosettes like this if you wanted to. This, this makes me think of you know what, if you see again, as I talk and as I play, um, the uh, blue ribbon, like at the state fairs, I don't know if, if I would, if Canada gives out, like if, I know we have competitions and things, but I don't know if there's a blue ribbon. It always makes me think of state fairs and American movies, but, but you could certainly make this like blue and white with a big number one on it and give it to somebody who makes like the best of, you know, apple pie or the best, some kind of food and like, just as a nice, your food is awesome and give them like a blue ribbon. So yeah, you could make them as big as you wanted and as many layers as you want, but you can also make them pretty simple if you were making a bunch of them. Okay. So then I had the thought, okay, so I can make them bigger by adding more pieces. Can I make them smaller? Yes. Yes, you can. So what I did was I took, and I should have had a sample so you would understand. Oh, here we go. This will work. So what I did is I just took a piece of paper and I cut it one inch. So this, like from either side of this to either side of this is about an inch and a half. So I cut a one inch piece of paper. I'll do it this way so you can see. Oh, here I can do it this way. I guess you can still see. I cut it one inch and I made it long enough that it fit who this, this, my sample piece just fits. This is what I just grabbed off the desk. Right. And so then I lined it up where the teeth, cause I wanted the pointy end where the teeth were just about at the edge. Now, if I wanted the scalloped end, I would do it the other way. So you see how it doesn't quite go the whole way. You still need two pieces. And I made a smaller rosette. 
because I wanted to know this is where the whole layering the rosette thing started. So I made a smaller rosette. So for comparison, there's the bigger rosette and there's the smaller one on top. Right? <laughs> Do you want to know what I ended up making? So, okay, here, I'm going to show you one more thing before. I'm just going to keep teasing you. Okay, so this is the one where I just punched out a circle. Do you see down here by my finger? You see how it's split? Yeah, I'm trying to get on there without it's split, right? That's because I didn't when I was lining it up. And like I said, you have to do this. I had it pushed too hard one way because it's all the same color. It's just two pieces. But I didn't even out like the center piece, this piece. I didn't make sure that the that the tension and like that it was even. I had them squished together in one place. I glued them together. I held them down. I put the blocks on. I left them for 10 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> the second I popped the blocks off, the thing popped open at the bottom like this. And no amount, I tried pushing and pulling and re-gluing and, and no amount of that was going to work. So I ended up with a split. Probably, probably three eighths of an inch, this split in the bottom. So I got to thinking, because at first I was just going to make like a fancier rosette with two layers on it. Um, so then I got to thinking, okay, well, I got to do something else. So I thought, well, I just, I have to fill in the hole. I got to make it look like it was intentional. And then I started down like an engineering, paper engineering, I like to call it, a paper engineering rabbit hole. And I filled it in. <laughs> and I, this is where I came up with, it's now glued down. So now I've got a piece of paper in here. So one, one piece is glued to one side of the paper. The other piece is glued to the other side. I pulled a little bit harder. These are stretched quite wide, you'll notice, but they're stretched in. This was just like my random piece of paper that I stuck on the back. Would you like to see the whole front thing though and how it all turned out? And then I'll show you the rest of the paper engineering. It's the flower. <laughs> I know. I was quite happy with myself when I did this. Look at this. Look at how cute it turned out. So I thought, you know, if you could, if I had welcome. I had a welcome tag on my desk. That's why it says welcome. I'll be honest with you. It was just the easiest. But th if this said thank you and you wanted to give somebody like a little flower. And seriously, this thing is solid like solid <laughs> so here's what i did because <laughs> oh the pieces okay so i don't know if you'll be able to see but i stuck so where the hole is the pieces are stuck to the back of this piece there's two pieces of these but this is the small rosette on top of the big rosette and then i just put like a little center piece right i did tie the bow on but that was just because i wanted to it's not really covering anything it does make this a little um, a little neater, but I did manage to pretty much pull that close. Then I took two pieces of the rosette, like I cut one strip and then I cut it in half and I made it, I, I glued just the ends and I put them together in my little bulldog. People call these all sorts of things, bulldog clips, right? So I made the rosette and I held it together like this. Now I let it sit for a good, I don't know, 10 minutes. The second I took the clip off, the thing popped open, but it was, it gave me the shape I wanted anyways. Like I didn't need this to be hard closed. I just needed it to not be square. So then I made a leaf on either side and then I made my stem. So I thought, well, this is great to hold these down. I'll just put them between two pieces of cardstock, which I did. And <laughs> this is where the engineering comes in. And two of the, oh, because they're still on my desk, I can actually show you. So if you're not familiar, Stampin' Up! has, what do they call them? Foam adhesive strips. These long strips of foam adhesive. And they are a little bit thicker than the average um, dimensional. So I put one on the back and then I had to put one on top. And then I sandwiched my leaves in between my two layers of cards. And this is just some randomly cut width of cardstock that holds everything together, right? And so I have it, so there's two pieces up there and then two pieces down here. And then I sandwiched my leaves in between so there's glue on either side of these leaves and I did this and so I was happy in the end that because these foam pieces because they're one solid piece I think they make it like this is like a sturdy sturdy flower but then as I was looking at it, I'm like oh my goodness that's so cute and it is cute if you look at it from the front if you turn it to the side eh, you do see a little bit more than you want to so then back to the drawing board I cut more strips and I glued them in so I have to put this envelope down just to show you so all I did, and I have the extra two to finish this side. So in the end, all I ended up doing, oops, 
<laughs> gotta, get the, gotta get the lid off my glue bottle. Was I just took this and I put a little bit of liquid glue on the inside. These are pre-cut. That's why I forgot to put some right up there too. So I just put a little bit of the Tombow. This is the, I have it in a different container, but this is the glue I'm using, right? Our multi-purpose liquid glue. Oops, I just knocked a whole bunch of things on the floor. And then I just put this over top and it's cut to fit in between. So these are not flat. This is not a perfect square. Um, these side pieces are like slightly lower. I don't know if you can see on here. I don't know if I can get it close enough. So they're slightly lower, but it was just meant to be. So it's just not like super bright white. And when I'm, when I'm not trying to show you on camera, I will take this other piece because I decided this after, of course, after I had glued everything together and I didn't want to have to retie my bow. I'll put a little bit of glue there and I will just stick this other piece in there as well because there's one on the other side and I managed to get it in after the fact. But anyways, that was my, that was my like, oh my God, I can't believe how well this turned out project was my flower. So I think, I think Dahlia might be the flower I'm thinking of. Um, this is definitely to me pansy colors. Right, aren't pansies light purple with the dark purple and the yellow in the middle? Um, but yeah, the the shape of the flower made me think of dahlias. I think is the right one. I'm not a, really a flower person, but but anyways, that was my. I thought that was just such a fun project. So <laughs> that's the fun that I had making all of those. Um, I'm not doing any tutorials or anything. I think I explained everything. So now it's just a matter of you got to just play and see what happens. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. And I will be making more of these cards, I can tell you, in a whole bunch of different shapes and sizes. And if I ever decide I need to make little, like, congratulations things. Uh, this was, see this, if I had put this, I'll do this. If I had put this on this side where it's, like, actually the right sort of color, you could make some fun, like, little rosettes or little awards and things. Or even just these to, like, put on water bottles and make it, like, jazz up a water bottle and event. Right? Especially if it's an anniversary or something, so. Anyways, I had a ton of fun with this set. So I recommend get a set, cut yourself one of everything, and then just start playing. And as you go, you will find ways to go. Um, this is not, if you are like, oh my God, I have 10 minutes, I have to stop and make a card for somebody's 50th anniversary. Maybe that's not the method that you want to try. Um, hopefully though, I've told you enough of the what not to do's and things I did wrong, that maybe you can just whip one off in a very short order now. But the, yeah, it, if you have the time, sit down and just play and have fun and you will figure out all the what works better, what doesn't work. Um, can I do this? Yes. And it's, I mean, it's paper, people. Just try it. <laughs> maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Worst, worst case scenario, you have to add one more piece of paper to the recycle bin. It, I don't think that's the end of the world. Okay. Thank you all. Um, enjoy. Happy Canada Day, by the way. I'm actually going to post this and I'm filming it on Canada Day. And... Um, because I was just like, how am I going to take pictures of all of this? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture of these individual projects. And then I'll just take a picture of these. So you just see a bunch of different combinations and options and give you ideas. Um, and I'll post them with the link to the video um, when I do it on Facebook and, and Pinterest and stuff. Just so there's a connection. But that'll take me a few minutes to do. Um, if you happen to catch, um, um, catch this on Canada Day, like I said, happy Canada Day. If not... Every day is Canada Day when you live in Canada. Woo woo. Um, have a great weekend, the rest of the weekend. And I will actually, believe it or not, see you tomorrow for uh, Tuesdays with Tracy. Now I just go figure out what it is we're going to do tomorrow because I spent most of my weekend doing this, having fun. Take care, everyone. Bye. <laughs>